Fullerton Street. situation. Once presence, our presence here today may seem a bit odd with this conference. However, please listen to what we have to say before you and before you form your opinion. We have both adopted children, which is why it may seem strange that we are here. We have different personal reasons for adopting children. In my case, we just wanted kids of our own to give a child a better home than that they have previously had. Linda already has birth children, but chose to adopt rather than have another child for selfish reasons. Reasons. They felt that they were. They felt, they felt that they were children who needed a home, and they would like to provide that. We both love our children. My daughter and Linda's daughter both suffer from a condition called reactive attachment disorder. This has many symptoms but causes behaviour that is hard to handle and affects everyone close to them. As a result of this behaviour, both of us have turned to social services for help, believing falsely as it turned out that they are the experts who would be concerned about our children and would assist. The outcome has been that instead of working with the family to help with the problem, both of us have instead being blamed for their behaviour. This has led us to a long this has led us to in, uh, us into long battles where we have experienced the same problems with social services services that many parents and other people here will have experienced. We have learned the hard way that things are not always as they appear. Although we come across although we may have come to this position in a different way. We too have suffered in the hands of social services. We have extreme, suffered extreme consequences and our desire is to change things for the better. Our story can be read in more detail on the website, Our Futures. You all have your own stories and reasons for being here today. Many have a common theme, the problem with social services. The more we have investigated, the more we have found out, the more people we meet, the more stories we hear, the more we are recognising the urgent need for social services to change. Our futures may be currently aimed at one part of this battle, reactive attachment disorder. Having said that, the principles apply equally to many other conditions such as autism, 
and changing changes needed within social services to help children and families with RAD apply across the board. So what is RAD? What causes it? RAD develops when a child does not develop a proper bond, attachment with a main caregiver, parent, during the first two or three years of life. There could be many reasons for this. It could simply be sorry. It could simply be that a single mum suffering from a long term postnatal depression, it could be family trauma due to divorce or death of a partner, it could be abuse or neglect, it can also be from rip ripping children away from the family that they love and putting them in through the care system. A child with RAD is a traumatised child whose brain has developed in an abnormal way. This can be seen in brain scans, but causes a child to react in many strange ways that are often that are too often just seen as naughty behaviour. Unfortunately, this means no treatment and assistance is given to the child. Things get worse, and in extreme cases, the outcome could not be worse for either the child or the family. In Linda's case, no harm was suffered by her daughter until she was taken back into care. But of course, the local authorities still uh, used the age-old phrase that many of you with the will be familiar with, the risk of emotional harm. Reactive attachment disorder is not understood by many. You have to live with it to understand it. It's not nice. It's not nice for the family and it's not nice for the child. These children and their families need help. There are many symptoms of reactive attachment disorder, all resulting from trauma, most of which is not understood by many. A rad child will have violent tantrums, or they will scream for hours on end. They steal and they will do no understanding of consequences and many other things. They will have no understanding of consequences and many other things. One of the worst symptoms is that they blame the very people they love most for their problems and will make ac accusations about them as they are sub subconsciously so afraid to allow anyone to become close to them. In both our cases, therapists were dismissed. Expert witness statements and expert therapy assessments were ignored. The problem was that the experts all agreed with us, the parents. We slowly realised that social services would only agree that had they said nasty parents. We have tried to understand what the problem with the assessment and therapy are. We have sadly come to, to realise that there are only two problems. One is money, although the pockets of social services for legal expenses seem limitless. And the two is the fact that the aim of the the fact that the aim is family support and reconciliation. Family, that word that seems to cause social services such a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you know that? Um, I'll take over for a bit. <coughs> I've pursued this through the courts, or rather have been forced to pursue it through the courts, I would say. Um, as yet, my daughter has still not got the help and therapy that she needs. Although we had a bit of a breakthrough this week because we finally got an assessment after fighting for almost three years. Paul's daughter came to him needing immediate therapy. She still hasn't had it. Both of our daughters have had violent tantrums and that just causes questions to be asked of us. It's affected their other siblings. Paul actually has three adopted children, I have two births and an adopted. It's created a tremendous effect on them. Paul's now given up on fighting social services because the stress of dealing so has just become too much. I've been forced to follow the legal path and hopefully <coughs> I've been successful in a precedent that will help other people in the future. We're here today and we're working hard not only to get therapy for our own daughters, but to get changes made in the system so that reactive attachment disorder and other similar problems are understood by social workers 
And instead of getting the blame culture, we develop a more supportive culture. We've uh, done quite a lot of research about this, and I'll be honest, I'm a teacher myself, so I'm in the system. And when I first heard of reactive attachment disorder, I had never heard of it, I didn't understand it. And it has taken me a long time. I think Jackie referred to the problem that adoptive parents aren't prepared for the problems and the emotional trauma that the adoptive children will experience. Um, by setting up our futures um, and creating a website to do help provide support, we're hoping to change the system. It's an unjust system, it needs changing. And we're also hoping to provide support for other families, whether they're birth families or adoptive families. Had my child been a young adult, would they have listened to a responsible adult and not a child in need of support? Likewise, when all our cases are brought into question, why do they not listen to professionals, friends and families? Why is there a need to hush things up in a closed court? How is that protecting the children when the children are not even there? Whose benefit is it for? We have a great concern that the closed court and the effectively gagging orders under which I'm certainly uh, under at the moment, um, who is it there to protect? Our feeling is it's there to protect the systems that are wrong and unjust. Because if they're not afraid of anything, why not have it open to public scrutiny? I have no problem in not identifying individual children and families. That's how it should be. But to actually not expose the procedures that are going on, I, I have a big problem with that. We'd like to make our ID awareness as common as ADHD and autism. And we also want justice. And in gaining that, we hope to be able to give our daughter the help they need before they become a troubled adult and themselves find themselves in the system having their children taken off them, having their children adopted, because that's what's going to happen. Although we adopted children, we don't support forced adoption. It's about what's best for the child and the family. Adoption should only be a last resort, but it seems to be the only resort that social services are willing to take unless we can make a change to the system. Sadly, we've learned social services do not always act with honesty and integrity. They often do not act in the children's best interest in spite of what they say. They do not consider other children in the family. Many families can be helped. And if this is true, then that will normally be in the best interest of the child. There may be many situations where children do need to be adopted. But there are also many, many situations where adoption is absolutely not the right outcome. Forced adoption seems to us to be wrong. We're fighting a, con a common enemy. Our idea is more common than people realise. We'd like to make our idea as common a word as autism. It'll help many children who've been victims of the care system. We'd like to change procedures so that the aim of social services is to keep families together and to support them with any difficulties. If you read the legislation and the procedures, that is in theory what they are supposed to do. It is absolutely the opposite of what we have experienced. That's the propaganda, isn't it? They put in every single social department, <coughs> social services department, they work hard to promote families. And I've said this before, there needs to be a class action soon under the Trade Description Act. Because well, they have nothing but they destroying do. families and you know it. They have tried very, very hard to destroy our family. I can only speak from our personal experiences. <coughs> They've done it with me, they've done it with all, all of us here. Yeah. And we're only a fraction of the people out there. There's tens and tens of thousands out that, there. That's why and we're talking now worldwide. There's millions. Yeah. And this is going on. And okay. these people are behind the secrecy, gagging orders. Yeah. They've never done it with me, but to be honest, I ain't going to be gagged by no perverts, because that's what we are. The perverts in the course of justice. I won't be gagged. However, <laughs> you have to be on help. I'm there. That's what you have to like. And you have to balance all of your children's interests and for yeah, me to exactly. get carted off somewhere isn't going to help the other children. Can we, can we leave questions to, towards the end? Yeah. But that's why we're here. Yeah. 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 Can I ask you a question, do you mind? Um, I don't apologise. <laughs> 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 Is it take the table of questions till the end?
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda.